Hi everyone, welcome to Dakar Whiteboard Sessions. My name is Anju Bika. The agenda for today's session is history before containerization, before even virtual missions. The next one, evolution of container technologies, how the te container technologies are evolved from 1978, Docker engine and Docker architecture. Let's discuss what enterprise used to do in the past prior to technologies like virtual mission and containers. To host an application, the enterprise need to procure the hardware fast. The question is how big and fast the server configurations has to be. It is not easy to speculate the current and the future demands. So, so to be on the safe side, business procure always procure high-end servers which obviously cause initial investment high to the business in addition to these initial expenses also business has to spend monthly recurring expenses like energy costs workforce to maintain the server and OS cost. OS cost is, is not monthly based on the licensing. In many of the cases, they, they are using only a fraction of the server capacity. And again, if the business want to inter launch a new application, they have to repeat the same exercise, starting from procuring the hardware, checking the configurations, always going for the high end, and again monthly recurring costs and including OS. In most of the cases, they can't use same configurations for both App 1 and App 2 because Sometimes app 2 requires different OS, different configurations all together from app 1. Or some cases they always if, if they always require the even same resources, if you host two, there is going to be a conflict. So these are the reasons to isolate the apps they have to go for different physical systems like p1 p2 p3 that is the only way to isolate the apps after the introduction of vms business expenses towards hardware reduced a lot if you see this hardware on top of hardware host OS hypervisor hypervisor is a technology from VMware which virtualizes the hardware because of this virtualization there is no one-to-one -one mapping before virtualization, there is always one-to-one -one mapping between app and physical server. How many apps they want to launch for, then they need four physical server. This is the only way to isolate the apps. After this virtual mission process, each app, this app thinks that it is running on a dedicated physical server. This app is also thinks it is running on a dedicated server. This also app, this app also thinks the same. 
but they are not running none of the app is running on the physical server they are running on a slice on a virtual technology this virtualization once the infrastructure on top of infrastructure the host voice then the hypervisor there exist many hypervisor providers we will discuss the top hypervisor providers this is virtualizing the hardware the hypervisor the virtual machine process what the virtual machine process is doing virtualizing hardware virtualizes hardware because of this virtualization now this is considered as one system this is completely different isolated system from this and again this is completely isolated system from this but all these systems are sharing the same hardware this is the beauty of virtualization but the downsides of this one each system is having its own os so os 1 os 2 os 3 if you have n virtual machines then we have to maintain n plus 1 os cast because of these oss the boot up time the boot up time consumes a lot of time and again licensing cast you have to go for n plus 1 os licensing cast admin time admin time to keep all these oss up to date and the portability issues the portability issues when we consider the dev qa prod environments when we are moving the app from one environment to another environment in the virtualization there is no guarantee and again the issues with the ci and cd we will elaborate these issues in the upcoming sessions docker container technology the docker container technology is very popular in devops community there are so many reasons why docker container technology is popular among the devops community one of the main reason is of portability how come docker container technology achieved the portability let's discuss before to discuss that let's discuss the same concept of java java also so popular because of portability when we discuss in java how java is achieved portability let's discuss the when we have the hardware either the virtual machine or the physical hardware on top of that then we are going to install the operating system the operating system either you can go for windows linux or any operating system based on that operating system you have to get appropriate jvm distribution this is very important to note whenever if you have the windows you have to get the windows distribution linux linux distribution linux distribution of jvm is not going to work for windows and vice versa the same thing whenever the jvm is installed on top of that then you can run any java application any java application the concept of java is compile once and run anyway how come this is achieved because of the jvm because of the jvm it is not depending on the operating system once you have appropriate jvm is installed on the os you are ready to go you can run the same concept is applicable here whenever you have hardware either you can go for 
the vm or physical on top of that then we go for the operating system os again your os is going to be windows or linux any any operating system based on the operating system we have to get proper distribution of docker engine once the docker is engine is installed you can run docker container this is the container 1 docker container 1 c2 and c3 to run the docker container what is the prerequisite docker engine same like to to run the java what is the prerequisite jvm again to run the docker container the prerequisite is docker engine because of this nature because of this portability because of this portability the docker container technologies is very popular among devops community and one more similar comparison between these two quite interestingly when in, in java when we say there is a concept called class there is one more is called object and again we already discussed jvm so in class in java terminology this is called a template template once you have the template you can create any number of objects by using the template so to create objects first you have to define the template first then you can create any number of objects so you are not going to be modified the template until unless if the change requirements are changed if the requirements are changed then you are going to modify the templates then you are getting a different type of objects but though, though that is the like what what the main thing to be noted here class object template from the template from the class template the objects are created any number of objects once you have one class template you can create n number of objects those objects we are going to run on top of jvm then it comes to the docker container technology there is a concept called image there is another concept called container and engine so the engine you can relate with the jvm is runtime so the container you can relate with the object then the image you can relate with the class means the image is a template once you have the template is defined you can create any number of containers these are going to run on top of docker engine let's discuss the differences between virtual machine technology and the container technology whenever you have the infrastructure layer this is host operating system hypervisor what is hypervisor is doing it is virtualizing is it is virtualizing the hardware layer the hardware layer is virtualized the sliced there is a reason now because of that virtualization you are creating three different isolated environments these are called vms each vm is completely isolated from each other means virtual machine technology is virtualizing the hardware layer when it comes to the container technology this is the infrastructure layer then we can consider oh this is the host operating system layer here there is no concept of the guest os this container technology is virtualizing this layer so virtualization of os means now we can say like vm vm is virtualizing the hardware 
then container technology is virtualizing the operating system so it means the virtualization is moved instead of from here instead of virtualizing here then the virtualization is moved on top based on this observation we can consider the container technology is more advanced compared to vms because of the virtualization is moved one layer up because of this virtualization one of the main benefits is of the guest os so these containers are completely utilizing the host operating system and directly working using these kernels and directly operating on the infrastructure layer this is the reason why the vms are called vms are called fatty thick and the containers are called lightweight lightweight let's check more comparisons the vm is virtualizing the hardware this is what we discussed this is virtualizing the software nothing but virtualizing operating system and the second comparison is if we have if we create n virtual machines then we need to have n plus 1 operating systems n for vms and one for the host operating system and here there is only one operating system the host operating system there is no concept of guest os again here the licensing costs for host and guest here only the licensing cost for the host os the vm os boot up consumes a lot of time the containers are like it, it takes most of the cases it takes minutes but here it happens in seconds again here there is a portability issue here they are portable because of docker engine these are not going to work there are many devops issues here it perfectly fits in devops the reason like now we can consider in the real time it works like this first developers are going to use the dev environment then they move that into the qa for the quality once the quality is happy signed off they are going to move into prod then whenever if we if we go to the old traditional approach vm1 this is vm2 we go for the vm3 we can't guarantee of whenever we are moving from here to here vm uh, from vm1 to vm2 or vm2 to vm3 there is no guarantee that the application is going to run smoothly without any issues so definitely we going to and there is a possibility not definitely there is a possibility that we will encounter the issues where it comes to in the in the dev if you have a container whenever we are moving container from dev to qa qa to prod there is no even there is no 1% there is no issues because completely they are going to run without any issues with smooth because the reason of docker engine the docker engine is making smooth transition from dev to qa qa to prod let's discuss container technology evolution which was started in 1979 in 1979 unix based container technology was introduced named as ch root isolating disk space of each process from the rest of the system later the ch root was added to bsd in 
In 2000, free BSD jails was introduced. Jail is a mechanism of isolating process. This is similar to CH route, but including additional process and boxing features like a file system isolation users under networking isolations. In 2001, another jail mechanism was introduced, which is named as Linux V server. Here the partition is called a security context. In 2004, this is one of the milestone here because Solaris containers are first time introduced for x86 and the Spark systems. These are these Solaris containers are called zones like zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. These zones are completely isolated systems. We can run multiple zones within a single operating system. In 2005, similar to Solaris zones, Open widget was introduced. This is making use of Linux kernels. In 2006, process containers are introduced later they are renamed to control groups. At Google, for, for limiting and isolating resource, resource usage. In 2008, this is the major milestone in the container history. The first time most complete implementation of Linux Container Manager was introduced. And this is standard for a basis for the journey, for the container journey. Many containers are emerged based, based on this LXC. We will discuss that. Warden. Warden is also introduced by Cloud Foundry. By using LXC in the initial stage, later they implemented their own libraries. Unlike LXC, it is not tightly coupled to Linux, it can work on any operating system. In 2013, let me contain that for you. This is the container. It is an open source version of Google's container stack, which provides Linux application containers. Introduced. Later, they stopped the further development and they decided to contribute core IMCTFY concepts and abstraction to libcontainer. In 2013, this is the another major milestone in the container history. One milestone in 2008, another milestone in 2013. This was developed as an internal project at platform as a service company called Dot Cloud. Later they renamed it to Docker. So Docker also used LXC in the early in the initial stage. Later they replaced it with the lib container. Unlike other containers, Docker introduced entire ecosystem for managing containers. This is very important to note. Because of this one, not only because of this one, because of a rich API, easy of use. There are many factors we will discuss more about these in the upcoming sessions. Docker is very popular among DevOps community. 
In 2014, similar to Docker Initiative, Rocket was introduced by CoreOS for fixing some of the drawbacks they found within the Docker. In 2016, Microsoft they added their container support to Microsoft Windows application Windows Servers OS Windows Server OS in 2015 and they released in 2016. Because of this one, the Docker would be able to run containers on Windows natively. Let's dive into Docker Ocean. We will begin with the installation. If you type uh, docs.docker.com get docker, you can see here docker desktop for Mac, docker desktop for Windows, docker Linux. You have to choose your, based on your OS, you have to choose the appropriate distribution. For example, for the Windows, if you click this one, now we can see here download from Docker Hub. There is a complete installation guide. Once you installed, what are the system requirements? Here they mentioned and install Docker desktop on Windows. All these instructions are clearly mentioned and it's very easy to install. Once you've done, you have to start that. So if you follow these, these steps, very easy steps, you're able to install the Docker. The same like Linux, if, it, if it's your OS is Linux, you have to go with this one again in Linux, which one, which flavor it is, I said OS, Debian, Fedora. The Ubuntu based on your Linux flavor, you have to select appropriate one. If it is Mac, you have to go and follow this link. It is very easy to install. All the best and see you guys in the upcoming session.